everyone, I'm Rosemary, and today we're going to be painting this ceramic penguin bank. Um, he's called a pudgy penguin bank, as I put, I didn't put that on the directions, but that's what he's called. He's called a pudgy penguin bank. Okay, and I'm going to be painting along with you so that you can see what I'm doing and not just listen to what I'm saying you should do. I think it's easier if you kind of can watch also. The first thing I would like you to do is I would like you to pull the stopper out of the bottom of the bank because we don't want to paint the stopper. Sometimes they're a little bit hard to get out, so if you have a parent there, just pull it out. We can put it back in when we're finished. All right, and black is going to be the last color that we use because black really, if it gets in the water, it gets in your brush, it gets in every other color. So I think it's best if we do the black last. Also, black covers a multitude of mistakes, so um, we do that last all the time. So what we're going to do first is we're going to do white. Now, I gave you paints and I gave you some brushes, and we're gonna start with the larger of the two brushes, and we're gonna paint the white on. Now, I don't want you to put too much paint in your brush when you're painting, because if you're doing a very little area like when you do his beak, if you have too much paint, where are you gonna spread it to? And then it's gonna be all over everything else. So put a small amount of paint in the brush, and uh, you can always put more, and spread it out as far as it'll go before you dip for more color. All right, so let's start with the white. We'll put the white in the brush, and you see how little I put in the brush? I don't scoop it up and glob it on, and I paint it on. Now, where the black is going to go, you can be sloppy now because the black will cover everything, so you don't have to be as neat as you will have to be with the black eventually. But smooth that out in all directions, and so it's almost dry when you put it on. You see the difference in the white of the bisque? This is called ceramic bisque. And this is the white paint that you're putting on. And a lot of people ask me, why can't I just leave it white? Well, you could see the difference in the color. It's a lot nicer when you put the white on it. So let's continue to paint the white on his belly. And I believe I did it under his wings also. Here's the finished sample. So and let's just get this going first. We'll do the white. And then I'll show you how to wash your brushes. And that's another important thing. Brushes have to be really dry when you go from one color to the next color. Because if you have a lot of water in your brush and you pick up another color in your brush, it's going to bleed. It's going to flow and the color is going to make a mess on the rest of the piece. So you wash your brush. And that's why I asked you to have a water bowl and a paper towel handy. So when you wash your brush, you put it in the water bowl. You never bang your brushes down. You wanna always try to keep the shape of your brush. So I swish them back and forth, and then I dry it on the towel before I go to the next color. It's important to keep your brushes clean and wash them as soon as you can because as fast as the colors dry on the ceramic piece, and look at how little of that paint that I used. I used so little of that white, hardly anything at all. I got that on there, and now I'm gonna put the white under his wings and like I said you don't have to be really neat with that we will have to be neat with the black when we do it but for the white we could just put a little bit on there I'll put another little dot of white come on come on okay there we go and I'll do the other wing Okay, so I think that's all the white there is on there. And now, washing your brush, like I said, don't bang it. Swish it back and forth. And then blot it out on the paper towel before you go into the next color. And we're gonna leave the black for last. Like I said, black is gonna be the last color we do. So I want you to get your orange out now. And yours are in little wells. You don't have to do, this is a palette. You don't have to do that because yours are in those little cups that I gave them to you in. So we'll take the little, little brush, take the small brush, and again, we're doing a very little area on his beak. So pick up very, very little paint in the brush. Start at the tip, and when you have less in the brush, work your way back to around where the white is. You don't wanna get it on the white. Start with the tip, and very gently work around. Now this one brush load will do this whole beak. That's why I'm telling you, don't put too, too much paint in your brush. just a drop more because I had very, very little in my brush. So there we go, the beak is done. Now while I have the orange out, I'm gonna do his feet. 
and he has three toes here in the front. Now this you need a little bit more paint, but, and, and like I said, you don't have to be perfectly neat here because the black will cover any orange that you get up on the body. But it's always, it's always a good idea to try to be as neat as possible, but black does cover a lot of things. Now I'm not painting the bottom right now, but you always should. Um, when I had students and when I have students in my store years ago, I had a store and I would tell them that nothing is ever completed unless the bottom is done. And it's important to do that. But it's your piece, and you know you can do whatever you'd like. You can paint the bottom in black. You can paint the bottom in the orange. You can leave it till the end when all of this is dry, so you'll be able to handle it, and then you can turn it over and do the bottom. Okay, so there's his feet. Okay, got it. All right, again, we swish, swish the brush especially a pointy brush. You, that brush that I gave you has a beautiful point, so you don't want to ruin that point by banging it down. You switch it and you dry it. And when you dry it, you roll it also. You kind of do this with it. Okay, not this. Never bang your brushes straight down. Okay? All right, so we're going to do the eyes when we do the black, and uh, the eyes will be done with the back end of the brush. I don't know if any of you have ever taken a class from me before, but we do dots, we do eyes with the handle of the brush and you, it's, you just dip and put but the dots stay wet a lot longer than the paint when you put it on so we do the, any of the dots we do last so um now let's do the flowers let's do the flowers i'm going to get the um the red now i don't know if i gave you yellow or you just have the green a little bubble if you have yellow you can place a couple of yellow dots where you're going to put the flowers. And if not, we'll do them in, we'll do them in the green. This can be done in any color you'd like. You can do it in the orange if you'd like. And we're going to take that back end of that brush. Now, I'm using the flat brush that I gave you. I'm going to take the back end of it. And I'm going to place, I have three flowers. So I'm going to place three dots for the centers of the flower. One, two, three. Three. And I put them about an inch apart. I don't know if you could see that well, but I put them about an inch apart to so do them in the yellow or the green. Okay, you could do the centers in the green also. And then I'm going to take the red with the back end of the brush again. And I'm going to put five dots around each of the yellow or green dot that I did. There you go. Now the way to do that is I always say it's like two eyes and a mouth and then you fill in on either side. So you do above the yellow, you do one, two, you do two dots above the yellow, and then one directly under the yellow. See the one under the yellow? It's almost like a triangle shape. And that leaves you the proper spacing in between to do the other two. Then you put a dot in between. And you see they'll all be different sizes, and if you don't like the size of them, if you don't like the idea that they, they get smaller um, as you do them, you have to dip every time you want to do a dot to keep them uniform in size. So I just went back over them. Okay? So again, it's like a triangle. You do, I always say, two eyes. Those are my two eyes. And then I do the mouth underneath the dot, the yellow dot. Two above, one below. And then it leaves it evenly spaced on either side to do the dot on either side. That's how you get a uniform uh, flower, okay? And I'll do one more. Again, two dots for my eyes, one dot below, and then one dot on either side of that center dot that we did, okay? We did that. Now we're gonna let that dry. That's that, See, now that's gonna stay wet for a while. So be very careful now that you don't touch that, all right? So what I'm gonna do now with the black while that's drying, I'm not going to go to do the rest of it. While that's drying, I'm going to take the black, and I'm going to take my pointy brush, and I'm going to edge around this area here so that I don't use the big brush. You see what I'm doing there? I'm going to edge it. And then I'll go back with the bigger brush to do the main part of his body. All right, let's see. Okay. Now, this is a little time consuming. I want you to take your time. Whoops, I got a little bit on his body. Now, if you make a mistake, don't try to cover it now. Like, say you got the black on the white. 
don't try to cover it. Don't try to take the white and go over it now. If your black is wet and you try to put the white over it, you're gonna mush it together and you're gonna have gray. So you can touch up anything, but always make sure that your color is dry. Whatever the color is that you made the mistake with, make sure it's dry and then you can go back and you can do anything over it. It might take a couple of coats, but always make sure each coat is very dry before you try to touch it up. Anything can be fixed. So I'm just gonna go around. And this way with the smaller brush, I get a nicer edge. And if you feel it's easier to do the black first and wait on the dots because they're wet, you can do that also. I mean, you can do it in any order that you choose. And you can always go back and rewatch the video. Nobody's rushing you. I may work a little faster, but all the instructions will be on here and then you can always watch them anytime you want. Now see, I'm going around, all around his face. with the smaller brush. I use the, where the, the stopper is going to go, the plug, I put my finger in there to hold it so that I don't touch those little dots that are wet. Almost around, and then I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna do around the wings also with the smaller brush. But you may not have to. I hope everybody enjoys painting this ceramics and I hope you fill it up with a lot of money. He's really cute. He's a cute piece. Okay, I have all that done around his, his the white part. So, no, I think I'll just work with the big brush. So again, I'm swishing, swish. Don't bang, swoosh, and roll it dry on your paper towel. But you see what I'm saying? Once you get the black in the brush, it kind of dirties your water and everything. You can always go and you know clean your water in between. Like if you have to go back to white, I would definitely clean the water before you do that. All right, so now I'm dipping in the black. Now that, you can put a lot of paint on your brush with that, but even though there's a lot of paint, I want you to make sure that you spread it out as far as it'll go. Look at that one brush load, what it does. You spread that out as far as it'll go before you dip for more paint. You don't want your paint to be wet looking and shiny. You want to pull it out until it's dry before you dip for more. And I, I do a little bit in the slot where the money is going to go because you could see the white up there. Again. Did you see how much it, that one brush load did? Okay, so now I'm dipping for another brush load. And when I have less in the brush than I do in here because I don't want it to be gloppy and thick in there and dripping down the inside. Okay, all right, I just keep going nice and smooth. I'm gonna do it slowly, I work fast, sorry, but I'll do it slowly so that you can see what I'm doing. See, that's where the flat hairs of the brush come in very handy. Back and forth, it smooths the paint out better than the round brush. So that's why I only use the round brush around the edge. You see, I have orange on there. I had it on my fingers and I got it on there. So I make mistakes too. And it goes right over it. The black just covers everything. So you don't have to worry about that. Just remember you have white under the wings. So um, just try not to get it on the white. I'm gonna go back, like I had said, with the pointy brush and just do an edge Right there, I did a little edge under the wing. I'll do that on the other one. This way it tells me don't go up on that area. Okay, I did both of them. See them? Okay, then swishing the brush, drying it. See, I don't even put my brush down for five minutes with paint in it because as fast as it dries on the piece, see how fast this dries if you pull it out properly? It dries in the hairs of the brush and then it's very hard to get it out. So at the end, I will always go wash my brushes with soap and water, but for now, I always swish it and get that paint out of it. I didn't do it with this one because I know I was going right back to it, but I'm not going back to the pointy one right away. So we'll go back with the big brush now, smooth it out as far as it'll go, and you're almost painting it dry. Pull it out, pull it out. Now see it's starting to run out. When it starts to run out like that, I'll dip for more paint. 
I find that when I teach ceramic classes to children, that's the one thing that they want to do is they want to put a lot of paint in their brush and sometimes that's what makes it messy and it doesn't dry properly. So pull out the paint. See, and I was able to just kind of feather it down over the wing and I didn't go on the white. Now, I think actually we're gonna be using that round brush again because I see another area that would be good to do with that little round brush. So I'm gonna put this down, the big brush. I'm not gonna wash it because I'm going right back to it. And I'm gonna trim around his feet. Now, where do I hold him? <laughs> I'll hold him by this little wing. I'm gonna trim the top of his feet with the little brush. Oops, a little wet, so it's sticking to the paper. All right, so that gives me a much better edge there, and it's, it's easier to do with this pointy brush. I just did that one side. Now I'll do this side. And again, I'm swishing it, getting that black out of there and rolling it on the towel. So now I'll be able to go back in and just fill in with the bigger brush around here without getting it on the white. I have a little area that needs to be touched up, but you know, I will do that at the end when I'm finished. I'll take my little brush and go back and touch up, but I will always make sure all my colors are dry before I do that. And this is giving time for the dots to dry. My dots are almost dry now on there. Okay, I think I'm just about done. Oh, I have this little section here. Okay, and like I said, I would, I would do black on the bottom and I might as well just do it while I have it in my brush. And you don't have to do inside where the plug is gonna go because you, you're not gonna see that. Your plug is gonna go in there. And just be careful you don't go getting it up on the feet here. You might just be able to go across like this, just feather it with the flat side of the brush. Now you're gonna to have to be careful if you do the bottom, not to sit it down right away. It might always be a good idea to start with the bottom. But, um, okay, I have that done. So now I'm putting my brush in the water. I'm gonna leave it in there for a few minutes because I don't think I'm gonna be using that brush anymore. I'm gonna go back and touch up a couple of spots where I went out of the lines. I want to show you what I did, and this is a perfect example of not doing it while it's wet, and I did that purposely so that you could see it. First of all, I don't even know where I can hold him right now because he's wet, but um, look at his foot, and you see I tried to touch up the orange, and the black was still wet, so it smeared it together. So always make sure your colors are dry before you try to do one color over another. Okay, so my mistake, I wanted to show you that. Now we can go back, and we can do the dots that we didn't do before, so, and the lines. So what I have on here, um, let's do the lines first. Let's take the pointy brush and put a little bit of green in it. Now roll it to a point. I always put the paint in my brush and I roll it to a point, see? Roll the hairs of that brush till you keep that nice point on there. And we're gonna do some lines. See those little lines above on the top and to connect the flowers? Now this is just a suggestion, so if you have something else you wanna do on there, feel free. You're the artist and it's up to you to do whatever you wanna do on the piece. So I'm gonna do like a connecting line. And it doesn't have to be thick, it doesn't have to be thin, it could be whatever, okay? I just did two connecting lines on there and then out the bottom. I did a couple out the bottom. And then I'll put 
put a couple out the top. Okay, I did a couple out the top. Now to do leaves, put a little bit of paint in the brush, the green, and you just, where did I put my leaves? Let's see, oh, I just did them on each side. Okay, just lay your brush down and press and you have a leaf, okay? Press, press. So it's not a dot, it's, um, it's, it's more elongated, you know, it's, it's longer and it looks like a leaf, okay? How many did I do on this one? Oh, that's about it, okay, so there we go. All right, so now that's done. The flowers are done. Now, with the back end of the brush, we have to do his eyes. So I like my little brush, my flat brush handle, or either handle you can use, and put a little bit of black in the handle of the brush, and then do one eye, and then I dip twice because I don't want it to be little. I want them to be the same size. Okay, and he's got his eyes. So that's it, that's this penguin, and uh, I have some touch-ups to do. You can see I got black under the wing, and that's what happens when I'm rushing it because I'm trying to get it all in and for you to not, not have to sit and wait for me to let mine dry but you can let yours dry in between. Don't rush it and make sure everything is dry before you try to do your second color. And there he is, and here's the finished one, right here. And then you put your stopper back in. Now, these are self-sealing paints, so you really don't have to spray them or don't have to put a sealer on them, but if you want to, you can get a paint on sealer or spray. Spray is toxic, so you have to do it outside. Um, but if you want to put a paint on sealer, Michael's, uh, I think even Amazon sells them. They're just called paint on sealers for acrylic paints. These are acrylic paints. Everything is non-toxic and they're pretty much self-sealing. But if you wanted a shine, they sell it in the paint on sealers in a shine or they sell it in a matte. Uh, this probably has a matte on it. I usually put a little matte on here, okay? Because I like that little bit of it, like a satin sheen that it gives to it. So again, thank you all so much for taking my class. Uh, I hope you all have a very, very Happy Thanksgiving and happy holidays and stay safe, be well, and thanks again for taking the class.